Have you or someone you love suffered from mental illness, anything from a simple episode of being depressed all the way to more complicated medical illnesses like schizophrenia or bipolar? If that sounds like you, I've got the perfect video for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Hampton, and I'm on a mission to help you achieve metabolic health. And today, I want to tackle an important issue. But before I begin, I want you to join me on my mission. And there are three things I want you to consider as you support the work that I'm doing. Number one, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that every time we have a new video, you'll have an opportunity to share that video and hear that video with others. Number two, simply share this video, especially if you have somebody in your life who is suffering from any type of mental illness. I mean, a simple anxiety attack is a mental illness and something we need to deal with. And the last is that I'll be sharing my link tree in the notes. And the link tree will provide an opportunity for you to uh, see all the affiliates and products that I think are helpful for you to achieve metabolic health. And I want to make sure you're aware of those uh, as well. So I have some good news for you. And the good news is that a low-carb keto or carnivore dietary pattern is something that may be helpful, may be helpful for anybody who's suffering uh, from mental illness. And by simply reducing your carbs, you may find that you'll reduce your medications, or maybe you don't have to take medicines at all for any type of mental illness. And I just love that idea. And again, it's not about not taking medicines if you need them. It's about either reducing them, and in some cases, not taking them at all. Now, if you follow me uh, on my Protecting Your Nest podcast, you've seen some of my previous guests, one of whom was Dr. Ken Berry. And when I talked to Dr. Ken Berry, who pretty much has a carnivore diet, which is that kind of extreme version of keto, he found that it was good for not only him, but his patients and followers for both being more focused, uh, having mental clarity, and of course, uh, just being easier to be around. I've also had other guests like Amber O'Hearn. Amber uh, has bipolar. And in that episode, we talked about how she was able to use carnivore as a way to not even have to take medicines for the most part. And it's really something she'll never go back to. She'll never go back to eating those uh, high carb foods that uh, worsens her mental illness. And finally, Dr. Georgia E was a guest. And Dr. Georgia E is a psychiatrist who uses carnivore as well. And she found that for our patients, rather it's keto or carnivore, they benefit. So I really appreciate them for sharing their insights. And they have really helped uh, many people that follow them to do just the same. So, so before I share the study, I wanted to uh, spend a moment with you guys just talking about the uh, side effects. There are many side effects that uh, occur when you take uh, psychiatric meds. And, and that's one of the reasons why we want to have alternatives to just meds. Now, on a very simple level, uh, we think about things like dry mouth, blurred vision, constipation, dizziness, lightheadedness, and of course, weight gain. Now, as an obesity doc, not really a big fan of the weight gain, but that is something that's very common. And any of you have, who have taken those uh, medications can attest to that. But there's more. Uh, unfortunately, more serious side effects of psychiatric drugs include uh, mania, uh, psychosis, things like hallucinations, depersonalization, unfortunately, even suicidal ide ideation, and believe it or not, heart attack, stroke, and sudden death. And, and, and when you think about those things, those are the exact same things that we're trying to avoid by taking the medicines in the first place. So it's really important we are always searching for another way. So let's let's go to the study. And, and when you look at the study, it's entitled uh, The Ketogenic Diet for Refractory Mental Illness, a retrospective analysis of 31 inpatients. And, and, and you know, when you do uh, retrospective, we're going backwards and looking at data versus prospective, where we look forward and follow data that way. And I see two familiar names, at least for me, Dr. Eric Westman, who's been doing uh, research at Duke for years since 2002, and Dr. Georgia E., uh, who we just commented on. So let's look at the background and hypothesis. It says that the robust evidence base supporting 
the therapeutic benefit of ketogenic diet and epilepsy and other neurological conditions suggest the same metabolic approach may also benefit psychiatric illnesses. And, and why do I call myself the metabolic health doc? Because so many medical conditions are metabolic. So uh, mental health is one of them. And that's why we are you know, hypothesizing that maybe, just maybe, if we take the same approach, we achieve metabolic health. Maybe it'll help our mental illness. Let's look at the study design. As I mentioned, retrospective study looking at 31 adults. They had severe and persistent, that's a very important word, persistent mental illness. It included uh, major depressive disorder, bipolar, and schizoaffective disorder. Uh, symptoms at the time of their admission to the hospital were poorly controlled uh, despite intensive psychiatric management. In other words, we were doing our best to take medicines, get therapy, and all those types of things, and uh, we weren't doing well. And then they decided to do this study with a ketogenic diet, and, and it's important that you notice that they only had 20 carbs per day. And that's really important. And Dr. Eric Westman would say total carbs, not net. And that's important because so many studies that you've seen in the past were claimed to be a keto study, but they really weren't. Or they claimed to be low carb and they really weren't. And they did this for six um, to 248 days. So anyway, so let's now look at the results and three patients were unable to adhere. So no matter what the dietary pattern is, there will be times when people can't adhere. And, um, and so those patients were excluded. And as you can see, uh, among the included participants, they used this Hamilton, uh, not Dr. Hampton, but the Hamilton depression rating score. And they saw that the scores went from 25.4 uh, down to 7.7. .7. And you see this uh, p-value of uh, less than 0 0.001. That's the, the p-value is the probability of obtaining a result on a p-value of less than 0 0.05 is considered statistically significant. As you can see, this is not just less than 0 0.05, it's much less at 0 0.001. And among the 10 patients with the schizoaffective uh, illness, uh, they use this uh, positive and negative syndrome scale. And when they use that, they saw the score go from 91.4 down to 49.3. Uh, and again, the p-value was significant, and they didn't just see improvements in these psychiatric symptoms. They also saw improvements in metabolic health using keto, which is no surprise to anybody who follows this channel. So the conclusion was that the ketogenic diet with um, patients with uh, treatment refractory illness, in other words, they had treatment that uh, illness that wasn't responding to treatment was feasible, well tolerated, and associated with significant and substantial improvements in depression and psychosis symptoms and multiple markers of metabolic health, meaning you get more bang for your buck. I love this figure, uh, which was provided by the researchers in the study. In this figure, we're looking at medications, right? And again, we save so much money in healthcare and we do this. There was a reduction of medication in the bipolar group, the depressive disorder group and the schizoaffective disorder group. Only one of the patients in the bipolar group needed to have an increase in their medicines. Overall, 64% of the participants were discharged on less medicine. Imagine that. Imagine the cost savings. Imagine the savings and no side effects. I love this graph as well that they share to the left, 28 inpatients, which we've described making sure the keto diet was done properly is in the middle. But look at this. Think about this. Imagine that this was a drug. 43% achieved clinical remission. That means that they were symptom-free. 100% uh, improved their symptoms. 100%. This is, this is like breaking news. And then 96% lost weight, which is very common with keto. And we just commented on the fact that many were discharged on less medicine. So, you know, earlier in this video, I shared the potential uh, side effects of psych medications. And I, you know, I want to walk through maybe the top four just to compare those meds to keto and, and why treating uh, mental illness with diet is so much more effective than just relying on medications alone, of course, using keto and or carnivore. So number one, 
psych meds cause weight gain. Uh, and, and based on randomized controlled trials, a uh, low carb diet being compared to a low fat diet, the low carb diet was clearly, uh, and keto's a version of that, is clearly the best and most effective way to lose weight. In fact, I've shared this graph that you see in front of you many times in the past and other videos. I want to share it again from the Public Health Collaborative. And as you can see, if you focus on the blue bars, it was 36 to zero. In other words, there was no low fat diet that was better than a low carb diet. So that's the weight gain issue resolved with keto. Then there's this concept called anhedonia. And believe it or not, anhedonia is common in 50% of the patients can take, uh, taking psych meds as have, uh, and they just don't feel uh, the way they want to feel. Uh, and anhedonia is basically just reducing the ability to feel pleasure. Imagine taking a drug to reduce your symptoms and you just don't feel any pleasure. And even celebrities, well-known celebrities like uh, Kanye West, uh, don't like taking medications, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't be surprised. In fact, I remember hearing his uh, wife comment about it, and she was saying that, you know, for him, for Kanye, the medicines are not an option because it just makes him not feel like himself. So, so anhedonia is a problem. It's very common. And unfortunately, many clinicians don't even ask about it. So, so what's cool about keto is that you, it does not just uh, keep you from having anhedonia, but most people who become keto adaptive actually feel great. So it actually helps you to feel better. So that's why that approach seems more logical to me. The third thing that's very common with these medicines is uh, insomnia. They don't sleep well because most psychotropic psych medicines uh, really impact your sleep, uh, causing disturbances, uh, causing problems with sleep, and just uh, bothers a lot of people. I actually had a guest on one of my uh, versions of the Protecting Your Nest podcast, Michael Bruce, who was a sleep expert. And during that interview, he talked about, you know, all the studies that he reviewed uh, and how with the keto dietary pattern, uh, you actually reduce daytime sleepiness. So you're not sleepy during the day. You increase your REM sleep, that rapid eye movement sleep, which is so critical, and your quality of sleep is better. So I, I then followed up with his comments, looked up the studies, and yes, uh, many studies support that. You should definitely go to PubMed, type in keto and sleep, and you'll see the same thing. The last thing, and this is really important for so many people, is sexual function. Many people who take psych meds, uh, whether it's antidepressants or antipsychotics, find that their sexual function is uh, impacted. It's such a common side effect that many people who uh, are taking these meds are just not compliant. They are, they are not willing to uh, give up their sexual life to take these medicines. So what's cool about the keto dietary pattern is that it also improves sexual function. And, uh, and, and it may not happen in the very beginning. You have to become keto adaptive first. Uh, but what they find, it find is that when you limit fat consumption, and as you know, keto has uh, sufficient fat in it, the levels of your sex hormones like estrogen and testosterone are reduced, which then can lower your sex drive. Uh, your vaginal dryness can occur and mood swings and fatigue. So when you do keto, your sexual function is usually not impacted. So, so I wanted to share this video because there's so many people out there that you know and love, maybe you, who deals with anxiety, depression, and maybe other psychi psychiatric conditions. So, so we do appreciate uh, medications. We appreciate research. We appreciate the pharmaceutical in industry for doing that for us. But, but we must never forget that food is probably the best medicine for mental health and therefore should be our starting point. So, so I really encourage you to look in the comments of the video, look at the study, share the study with friends, family, but most importantly with your clinician because most clinicians are not necessarily looking at nutrition studies and we have to sometimes put that uh, before them because our goal as we work together to make the world more metabolically healthy is to shift the paradigm from one where we manage diseases with medicines and to one where we actually heal and recover, particularly uh, heal our brain by using lifestyle and in this particular conversation by using keto. So, so I really appreciate you guys coming to this video. I want you to like, subscribe, hit that bell. And until the next video from Dr. Hampton, continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.